so let us begin with some reactions of acid and base so our first reaction will be what happens when we take acid and react it with some metal what will we get so here one thing you have to remember is whenever acid and base react the first thing you're going to get is salt okay sorry what is a salt how does it work we are going to understand that later on but for now let us just understand that salt is formed here and something else maybe so before going that let us remember our psc muzzle psc hardly could make solid it was gold our p was potassium s was sodium c was calcium then magnesium aluminium zinc iron lead hydrogen copper mercury silver and the last was gold so what was psc muzzle it was a list of most commonly used metals based on the reactivity here k was the most reactive and au or gold was the least reactive reactivity means one they can displace another metal or here it can kick away some other metal from the group so let us take the acid hcl plus let us add a metal here which metal do we let us say let us put zinc here what will happen forget about this acid plus metal salt just remember this from chapter one when here zinc is a reactive metal hydrogen is less reactive why you can see here z is here and hydrogen is here so can the zinc kick away hydrogen obviously yes so who will get kicked out h will get kicked out and who will get the cl now z and will get the cl now z and cl so this we already know from chapter one however it's not completed why because whenever h is alone we should put two and h2 meaning one we're getting hydrogen gas and here z and cl we should always do the crossing of valencies z n and cl z n valency is not in the list so it was two cl valency is one so if you cross it what do you get here z n cl two that means we're going to get z n cl two now you can balance it which is necessary here cl is two h is two so put two here that will be balanced so what we got is here our HCl is the acid, Zn is the metal, and we're getting something called a ZnCl2 or zinc chloride. This zinc chloride is called the salt. And what are we getting here? Another other than salt, we're getting H2. And what is H2? Hydrogen. Is it only hydrogen? No. Whenever I put two, meaning it is in the form of gas that means acid will react with metal to give salt and hydrogen gas you can try this with any kind of acid any kind of metal let us try to take h2 so4 plus maybe take sodium then what will happen here so4 will be taken by the sodium so na so4 and who is alone here H will be kicked out so we are going to get h2 whenever h is alone we should have h2 for this what we do is we put the valences na valency 1 so4 valences 2 so if you cross it what do you get na2 so4 now you can balance it to sodium so 2 1 so4 1 so4 2 hydrogen 2 hydrogen so balanced so i hope you understood it this here is again what we call this the or what we'll call the salt so you take any kind of acid with a metal will get salt and hydrogen gas this is what we have got so far so let's try one more h and o3 our acid plus let us take which metal 
magnesium. Magnesium is more reactive than hydrogen. So you can kick away easily. Mg, so we are going to get Mg2NO3 plus H2. Again, you can put here where Mg2, 2Mg, 2 hydrogen. So, sorry, this will be Mg NO3 bracket 2, not here. Mg NO3 bracket 2. So, 2 NO3, 2 H, okay, balanced. This 2 is not needed. So, here, this is what we call as the salt again. Let us try one more. Mm, let's take HCl plus copper. So we are supposed to get CuCl2 plus H2. Yes. However, this reaction is not going to take place. Reason this copper will kick away the hydrogen. This copper will try to kick away this hydrogen. Can it kick away the hydrogen? Can it displace the hydrogen? No, because copper is less reactive than the hydrogen. As a result, this copper cannot kick away this hydrogen to become CuCl2. So what we get here is, if the metal is more reactive than hydrogen, that means any of this, potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, aluminum, zinc, iron, and lead, any of those, then the reaction happens to give a salt and hydrogen gas. If they are less reactive than hydrogen, for example, of copper, mercury, silver, gold, then the reaction will not take place. So I have understood it. So here we say acid plus reactive metal always give us salt and hydrogen. If the reaction take place, you will get salt and hydrogen. If the reaction does not take place, you will not get anything. I hope this part is clear. Then let's see what will happen if we take a base and a acid. Sorry, base and a metal. Base N plus metal. Again, obviously, we'll get salt, okay, because acid plus base will react to give salt. Let's take the most common base, NaOH, plus let us take the metal, zinc. So, let me write it again this side, it's needed, PSC, MAZIL, hardly. So, I'm not writing further than that. So, this was hydrogen, this was zinc, and this was sodium so here we can see zinc for it to kick away sodium and become z n o h is it possible no because zinc is below na so zinc can no way kick away na to get this reaction so what will happen here instead of kicking away the na zinc will kick away the h from here so what will happen here NaO will remain and zinc will come here. So this reaction is not possible. I'm cutting it. This is not possible. So this is the reaction that will take place. And who is getting kicked out? Again, hydrogen. Here, NaO valency will be 1, Zn valency 2. So it will be, if you cross it, 2 will come here. However, because this is a group, you need to put a bracket. Again, whenever H is alone, you should put 2. Afterwards, you can go on balancing. So again, this is what we call as a salt. So base plus metal also we are getting salt plus hydrogen gas. Why gas? Because 2 is given here. In your book, this compounds written in a different way. NaO2Zn or I can put that 2 for Na also because it's multiplied just like 2 into AB we can uh, sorry 2 into A plus B we can write 2A plus 2B similar okay so 2 sodium 2 oxygen and let's put the metals in front Na is a metal zinc is a metal oxygen and metal so back side so this salt is given in this form in your book so i hope you got it how we got that compound so the name of this compound is sodium zincate so i hope you get it so here what we see is when base reacts with metal it does not kick away the metal from the base but it kicks away the hydrogen from the base to give us hydrogen gas 
here one catch is there or one main point is there all metals cannot react with base from this list only two metals can do our zinc and aluminium why zinc and aluminium can react we'll get it in chapter 3 something called as amphoteric oxides and all that time we'll get it okay so we learned is acid plus metal we're going to get salt plus hydrogen gas similarly base plus metal we are going to get salt plus hydrogen gas however we learned the metal should be more reactive than the H to react with acid and in case of base the metal should be either aluminium or zinc if those two metals are there then we'll get this reaction so here when we tell salt 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 let's learn a shortcut method how to write a salt so let us say i'm reacting hcl with maybe um, sodium can sodium kick away h yes then the reaction will take place so we'll get a salt how to write a salt this is the acid part from the acid part remove the h so what is left without the h cl in place of that h place whatever metal is available here metal available na so we got nacl plus h is kicked out so h2 i'm repeating it again to make a salt in a reaction what you need to do is from the acid part remove the h and in place of that h whatever metal is available you place it there see you can try it here also maybe let us take na plus h and o3 this is the acidic part so remove the h and write the rest no3 and what is the metal level here na na no3 next step obviously valence is only needed valency one one cross no problem or you can try for this also suppose calcium plus h2 so4 how do you make a salt out of it remove the h part so so4 what will come that metal part is calcium so calcium so4 valency 2 to cancel each other out so this is how we are going to write the salts you can try with this also ch3 cooh plus maybe zinc then what will you get here remove the h ch3 coo then place the zinc here because zinc balance is two it will come here this is two this is one so i have you got it so this is a short method of how to read the salts so here one important thing which we are going to learn is in the above reaction we learned that or actually how will it take place is sorry if i take a test tube and put some acid into it okay let us say i'm putting hcl acid i put some zinc granules zinc, granules, zinc here then what will i notice i will see lots of bubbles coming up here and i we already know whenever we find bubbles meaning what it is the gas form plus i was putting zinc here so reaction was a salt will be formed zn and cl plus is is alonso 2 here valency 2 valency 1 so cross then what did you get Z and cl 2 so this is a salt we got no problem how are you so sure that the gas produced is hydrogen so here what we do is you can see in your book page number 20 figure 2.2 all of you open to that here in the given setup oh sorry not this page number 19 figure 2.1 in the setup you can see the hydrogen gas being formed are lighted by a candle yes and this gas hydrogen gas whenever you burn it it burns with pop sound so here what we do is this gas or whatever the bubbles are being formed here you can burn it here or as given the book you can allow them to pass through a tube 
and pass it in a soap water. Why soap water or water containing soap? Because you know when you put air in a soap containing water, it forms nice bubbles, big big bubbles. So I want big bubbles to form. And when you burn these bubbles using a candle, you will hear pop sound or popping sound. So we say whenever a certain gas burns with popping sound, we know that the gas is hydrogen gas. So our next reaction that we are going to study will be what happens when we react acid with metal carbonate. Just close your eyes and directly you can say acid is present, you are going to get salt plus something else that we will see. Before going into that, let us check what are metal carbonates. So metal means obviously some metal, maybe sodium, maybe magnesium, maybe aluminium and carbonate meaning CO3 having valency 2. So how will it form? NaCO3, Na valency is 1, CO3 valency 2. So if you cross it, Na2CO3. Mg valency 2, CO3 valency how much? 2 to cancel each other also, MgCO3. Aluminium valency 3, CO3 valency 2. So if you cross it, what do you get? L, CO3, 2 will come here, 3 will go here. Now, because CO3 is a group and we are putting a number behind a group, so bracket. So L2, CO3, 3. So this is how, what a general carbonates or metal carbonates will look like. Here, one more is given. What is it? Metal hydrogen carbonate or it's given in, you can call it as metal hydrocarbonate also. So what are metal hydrocarbonates or metal hydrogen carbonate? It will be HCO3 having valency 1. So here it will be Na1, Na1. So NaH, CO3. If it was Na, CO3, valency 1, valency 2, cross it, it would have formed Na2, CO3. They're very similar. I hope you get it. In one there's H is present, so the valency becomes 1. Here no H is present, so valency remains how much? 2. So here, let's see what the reactions will look like when we react acid with metal carbonates. Okay. So let me take the acid H2SO4. H2SO4 plus metal carbonate, let us take sodium carbonate NaCO3. Na valency 1, CO3 valency 2. If you cross it, we are going to get Na2CO3. Salt. How to make a salt? I already told you. This is the acid part. Remove the H and write whatever is after that. SO4. And what will you do? In place of H, put the metal. Here, which is the metal here? Na is the metal. So, Na, sodium. Cross the valences to check for the formula. Na1, SO4, 2. If you cross it, what are we getting? Na2, SO4. So, this is done. So, this Na is already gone. This SO4 is already gone. Gone means they join together to form Na2SO4. Now, who or which elements got kicked out? Hydrogen get got kicked out this side. This side carbon got kicked out and oxygen got kicked out. So those kicked out elements are hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. Whenever HNO is present, you're definitely going to get H2O in the product. I'm repeating again. Here, SO4 joined with Na to form the salt. No problem here. And salt, how will you write it? Remove the H from the acid and put the available metal there. Now, when they are gone, who are left out? Hydrogen from H2SO4, carbon from Na2CO3, and oxygen from Na2CO3. So here, Hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen got kicked out. Three elements. So among those three, 
whenever H is present and O is present, you're definitely going to get H2O. Similarly, whenever C is present and O is present, you're definitely going to get CO2. That means acid plus methyl carbonate will give us salt plus water plus carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. So I hope you got it. So you can try the same thing with some other reactions. For example, some other acid. Let us try with which one? Let's say the bigger uh, HNO3. Okay. So if I take let's say H2SO4, H2, sorry, it's already taken. Let's take HNO3. HNO3 plus which metal to take? Let us say we took aluminium. Aluminium carbonate, AlCO3. How will the formula be? AlCO3, valency is 3, valency is 2. So 2 is going to come here and 3 is going to go there. So put a bracket. So Al2CO3, 3. So here, what we are going to get is we are going to make a salt out of it. How to make a salt? Write this. And what's the metal here? Aluminium. Aluminium. Cross the valences. Al NO3. Valency 3, valency 1, cross it. Al NO3, 3. Because it's a group, put it under a bracket. Now, what we see is H got kicked out this side. From this side, C got kicked out, O got kicked out. Whenever HNO is present, H2O. Whenever CNO is present, CO2. So, here we got again acid plus metal carbonate salt and water and carbon dioxide so let's see what happens when we're talking about metal hydrogen carbonates so let's take this simple acid hcl plus metal hydrogen carbonate nah co3 this is hydrogen carbonate and this is sodium metal valency one one no problem here so make a salt again how to make a salt Put the other part remaining the order, remove the H from the acid, put the available metal. Metal available here is sodium. Valency 1 1, no problem. Plus, which elements got kicked out here? Hydrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. Hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. These three elements got kicked out. Two hydrogen doesn't matter, hydrogen. Three oxygen doesn't matter, oxygen. One carbon doesn't matter, carbon. So here HNO present, so H2O, CNO present, so CO2. So we get a similar thing, water and carbon dioxide and salt. So here we can see acid plus methyl carbonate or metal hydrogen carbonate will give us salt, water and carbon dioxide. What will be the difference in balancing? Here I did not do the balancing. I think this is already balanced, but some reactions are not balanced, so you can do that. So I hope you got it. So, next we are going to check or test for carbon dioxide gas. So, let us see how can you take a test for the presence of carbon dioxide gas. So, in chapter 1, we already got something called as CaO plus H2O giving us This thing was what? Our quick lime or the lime which you bought from the market. When you mix it with water, it forms a calcium hydroxide. It's very sticky, you know it already. So here, this is a compound calcium hydroxide which we get by reacting water with our lime which we buy from the market. Now we got in chapter 1 already that this calcium hydroxide is used for whitewashing. What was whitewashing? Putting our lime on the walls was called as whitewashing. We learned that when CaOH2 is put in the wall, it reacts with our carbon dioxide in the air to produce something called as shiny CaCO3 and the water was kicked out. I hope you remember it. This thing was calcium carbonate, see metal carbonate, which we already got in the previous part. So whatever, so in the example of the previous part, you can use CaCO3 also if you want. 
okay so here let's come back select lime plus carbon dioxide will give something called as a shiny CaCO3 and some water will be kicked out so here let us say we put this compound in the wall this is my wall here and I'm putting the CaOH2 so it will react with carbon dioxide in the water and give away uh, sorry carbon dioxide in the air and give away water molecules let's say this are the water molecules I have done 12 so 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and 12 water molecules are got kicked out now question is is there lots of carbon dioxide in the air or very less carbon dioxide here in the air carbon dioxide is only 3 sorry 0 0.03 percent very less so this reaction is happening very slowly this caoh2 is changing into let us write caco2 with red color and some water coming out red color and water coming out and so on this is happening so here the water is coming out very slowly why is it coming out very slowly because the reaction is taking place very slowly as a result less water will be produced or lots of times will be will take to produce lots of water as a result most of the water will get evaporated as a result whatever we get coc3 here will be dry so i hope you got it so because less carbon dioxide is, pre is present in the air that following reaction is happening very slowly so the water is being produced very slowly and whatever water is getting produced is changing into water vapor or is evaporating however in your experiment number sorry in the figure 2.2 page number 20 you can see when we reacted the sodium carbonate with our hcl gas carbon dioxide gas was produced and that gas is being allowed to pass through a pipe and being put in a calcium hydroxide solution what is calcium hydroxide this caoh2 let's say this in this case because the reaction is taking place very fast that means that our metal carbonate plus acid reaction so lots of co2 is getting produced so here lots of co2 will be entering here as a result the reaction will take us very fast so this all this coh2 will change into caco3 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 and along with changing into caco3 what will happen they will release water molecules so let me write the caco3 first and let me put the water molecules now water molecules so how many will produce obviously 12 because for one ca oh2 we're getting one water molecule okay so here the reaction is taking place very fast so lots of water will be produced very fast so will the water get enough time to evaporate and become water vapor no as a result this beaker will be a mixture of our water and our ca co3 powder powder co co3 will not dissolve in water because it is white color so we call it milky then what was the difference between caoh2 and milky caoh2 is white color this mixture is white color but this thing was sticky i already told you that caoh2 is sticky however here this will be water and a mixture it will be like milk watery watery so we call it milky so we say whenever we take any gas and pass it through caoh2 and if you find that the solution becomes milky means it becomes a mixture of some white substance and water we call that the given gas was carbon dioxide so i have understood it so how can you test the presence of carbon dioxide when we pass carbon dioxide through a solution of calcium hydroxide if it turns the solution calcium hydroxide is actually sticky if it becomes milky means watery watery white color we call that the gas was carbon dioxide gas before that we can again test for carbon dioxide in second process it's not a very correct process or it doesn't give a hundred percent guarantee still you can take a burning candle and Put carbon dioxide gas on top of it because co2 gas does not burn the candle will turn out why is it not 100 percent guaranteed because other gases like n2 nitrogen and all they also do not burn as a result it will turn out the candle so what is still when we get a certain gas first thing we can do is pass it through a candle if it burns with popping sound means the gas will be hydrogen if it turns out or if it turns out the flame 
then we can test for CO2 by the following test that is passing that given gas through a calcium hydroxide and if we're getting a milky from the sticky to milky we are going to say okay the gas is now calcium sorry what the gas is carbon dioxide so now let's go to the final reaction for this part so our final reaction will be what happens when we mix acid plus base obviously acid base present means what salt and what else we are going to get we are going to check it let's take the acid h2so4 plus let's take a base uh, let us take NaOH okay salt how do you write the salt remove the H from H2SO4 and write the available metal here cross the valences Na valence is 1 SO valence is 2 if you cross it Na2SO4 plus what else got kicked out here from the acid hydrogen got kicked out from the base oxygen and hydrogen got kicked out so here we can hydrogen got kicked out and oxygen got kicked out and i already told you whenever h and o get got gets kicked out what do you get h2o that means acid plus base we're getting salt and water no matter what acid you take let us say uh, ch3 cooh plus let us take uh, NaOH okay here what we are going to get is remove this H so it will be CH3COO the metal available is Na Na valency 1 valency 1 no problem what got kicked out H from this side O from this side H from this side so what got kicked out O and H and when O and gets get H get kicked out we get H2O so no matter what acid you take or what base you take you're always going to get salt and water here and in this case why are we getting water because h and o got kicked out so just to be sure let's compare it with the first reaction the first reaction was acid plus metal the answer was we got obviously salt and hydrogen gas why water is not forming here hydrogen gas so let's see this reaction let me write it, it red color hcl plus naoh giving us what will it be nacl plus h2o here let me write this with blue color uh, hcl plus Na it was NaCl plus H2. So what is the difference in this case? HCl to make the salt, I remove the H and put the metal. Similar. From HCl, I remove the H and put the Na to make it into a salt. Now let's see what was left out. Here H was left out, O was left out, and H was left out. And whenever H and O is left out, we get H2O. Here, H was left out, but no O was left out. As a result, only H was left out. So, only H2. I hope this part became clear to all of you. So, then let's go to the next part. So, here, when the reaction between or the reaction between acid and base giving salt and water is given as or what we call it is neutralization reaction neutral means what was the meaning of neutral i hope you remember it it was neither this side nor this side or what do you say neither positive nor negative neither good nor bad in between it does not always mean zero okay maybe suppose uh, world war ii one team is germany one team is our allies allies is usa uk russia and all and switzerland was neutral meaning it was neither towards helping germany neither helping the ally so neutral so in this case why do you call neutralization because acid is corrosive base is corrosive 
but they're exactly the opposite their reactions are exactly opposite okay if acid are considered positive we can consider bases as negative we're going to learn this in something called less ph level okay we'll see later on so here when acid and base react they cancel each other out means whatever is formed will mostly be neither positive or neither acidic nor basic or neither acid nor base so the whole reaction as a whole we call it neutralization reaction so if this is clear let us try to go to the next topic our next topic will be what will happen if we react our um, acid with something called as metal oxides obviously acid present means salt plus what else we're going to get okay when we say metal oxide let us write a metal sodium oxide means oxygen valency one valency two so na2o is a metal oxide metal magnesium oxygen oxide oxygen two two so mgo is a metal oxide so i hope you got it so when i say metal oxide meaning is metal plus oxygen so let us take acid hcl plus metal oxide what metal do you write let us say we're going to write na2o salt how to write salt remove the h put the available metal available metal here is sodium cross the valency one one no problem plus who got kicked out h from this side and who from this side o from this side definitely h2o so acid plus metal oxide we're getting salt plus water let me write this again acid plus base the reaction was salt plus water okay so it is an acid and a series of salt water is na2o a base or a metal oxide it is not a base i already told you base should have oh and it should be able to release oh minus in water but here sodium oxide does not have any oh so can i call it a base no it is not a base so what will i call it i will call it basic why basic because we know that acid react with base to give salt and water As acid is reacting with metal oxides and giving the same thing that means metal oxides and base are same behaving in the same way but metal oxides are not the base so we call they are basic in nature so this is the meaning of basic basic means they are not exactly a base but they behave like a base in the reactions so here what we say is metal oxides are basic in nature so if you get a question what are metal oxides what are you going to write you're going to write metal oxides are basic in nature so let's try the last reaction here what happens when we take our uh, non-metal oxide plus a base obviously salt here the reaction is little complicated i'm taking co2 c is a non-metal okay and oxide oxygen plus i'm taking um, let us take ca oh2 we are going to get CaCO3 which is a salt plus here also we get water okay because here C already gone here here O and H get kicked out from here this Ca joins here to become CaCO3 so H2O so salt plus water so again we know only acid and base can react to give salt plus water but here our co2 is not a acid why is it not a acid because acid should have h and it should be able to give h plus in water here co2 is not a acid because it doesn't have h but co2 is behaving like a acid to react with a base to give salt and water so we call co2 is acidic in nature and what is acidic in nature it means they are not exactly acids but they are behaving like acid so i hope this part is clear 
So if this part is clear, we can go to the next part.